Guys, it's Maxwell back with the next Clash of Clans video and today I have an attack strategy guide for you guys. So we are going to be taking a look at the Go Bow Holo, um, aka Golems, Bowlers, um, Hawk Riders and Balloons. So um, uh, I've never done it in one of these videos but I definitely want to bring it to you guys because it's been very successful for me. So we are going to be taking a look at it from a Town Hall 11 perspective, but it can also be used as a Town Hall 10 and even a Town Hall 9 with a few modifications. I'm going to talk about all of that in the following video, so um, yeah, let's get into it. So first up, before we do anything else, I want to take a look at an army composition with you guys. Um, if you want to practice this in friendly challenges, get used to it uh, or just... Um, yeah, build a generic army that you can use uh, with this strategy it would be sort of something like this so two golems are in, very important to me in the most cases seven bowlers um, I'm always adding five clan castle bowlers to that and if you're a town hall 10 or 11 also a um, clan castle giant ten hawk riders ten balloons um, those numbers are kind of varying for me gonna talk about that later as well Two baby dragons for funneling, two wizards also for funneling or cleanup or just all around usability. Four war breakers, they make um, you a bit more flexible. And then probably a couple of archers for cleanup, some builder huts or something, just to be nice and flexible if you want to practice with this um, army composition in friendly challenges. For spells, um, most of the time I am using two jump spells, sometimes even only one jump spell though. Um, then I am almost always use two rage spells, um, both on the kill squad, um, one heal spell, sometimes two heal spells and only one jump spell, or two heal spells and only one rage spell, kinda depends on the base, gonna talk about that a bit later as well, but this would be your uh, generic army if you wanna train it up for some practice. Alright, so with the army composition, or um, the main army composition out of the way, we are gonna be taking a look at a couple of bases, which were attacked with this army composition. We are going to talk about um, what I am looking for in a base, what is important, what are the key points in your attack. So let's take a look at that. And for that, we are going to take a look at the recent war we had against um, war bears and a couple of the attacks which I did in this war. So um, I was hitting tunnel tens with this. So um, I feel like it quite a few Town Hall 11s are still struggling with um, nuking Town Hall 10s uh, and obviously that's uh, never easy because everybody expects you to 3 star but um, it's not always guaranteed so you definitely have to have a solid plan. I've been relatively successful lately so um, I figured we would just take a look at a couple of my attacks. Before we start anything here I wanted to talk about my um, objectives for this base. So as you can see, there is a lot of um, uh, a lot of defense um, bunched up in the middle. So we got uh, three wizard towers right here, all the expos in the middle, the queen in the middle, clan castle in the middle. Um, so um, in these types of bases, I'm always looking to bring a pretty heavy um, bowler squad. So in this case, you can see I've got 12 bowlers with me one more time, um, because there is five more in the clan castle along with a giant. So um, my goal with the kill squad is to kinda waltz my way all the way throughout the to one side of the base. So in this case, starting on these two gold mines here, I'm gonna go through here, through here, through here, through here, all the way down. And uh, that, if you take a look at um, this section here, completely bleeped out. Um, there is quite a few easy targets left then for your hawk riders and balloons. For example, this would be easy for a balloon, although the bowlers are gonna get it anyways. This is very easy for balloons. This is easy for balloons. All this bottom section right here is easy for balloons. But uh, you're gonna have to notice that there is a Tesla farm right over here in this area between Inferno and Air Defense. So, um, and also there, uh, this base was pre-attacked um, uh, before I hit it. So I knew there was black bombs right here. So I decided to use Hawk Riders in this portion of the base. Then moving um, around the base. This is obviously easy for balloons again right here. This is easy for balloons. This archer tower is very exposed for balloons with this air defense down. And then over here, there's if this and this archer tower and this um, air defense is down, there's three cannons and a mortar right here that can or that could be taken out by one balloon. So um, I figured if I could take care of the middle of the base right here, it would be pretty easy to um, yeah get all the rest. I have five archers with me because there is uh, quite a few fancy. 
um, corner builder huts so I'm certainly prepared for that and then um, for this one I also brought two baby dragons and two wizards as I showed you in my generic army two jump spells um, two rage and the heal spell so pretty much exactly the um, army that um, yeah I did so uh, we're gonna start things off take a look at the funneling right here and then after that is done we're gonna pause it again so for the opener I wanted to tank this archer tower with the baby dragon and once the baby dragon is moving down it's gonna tank that and then I'm gonna use a couple of balloons to take that archer tower out right there and then the baby dragon is now free to move his way all the way down the flank of the base and take care of these buildings so that's pretty cool as well on this side golem has gone down on this um, uh, mortar right here the grand warden is just there to give the golem more HP make it survive a little bit longer and then the baby dragon is in behind to um, do the other half of the funneling. So baby dragon on that elixir storage right there. And then I deployed a wizard as well in behind to um, weaken that uh, elixir storage a bit more. And once all of that is going I'm deploying my second golem. Another wizzy for funneling just uh, because I felt like I wanted to help out that baby dragon to move along a bit quicker. So that's going down. And then wizard in behind and then one test wall breaker and since there is no bomb there all the other wall breakers now coming in. Um, king and queen behind wall breakers are able to crack that wall open. The first jump spell is down. Now it's time to release uh, the bowlers. The clan castle giant is in as well. And then I'm always using a pretty early um, uh, rage spell because obviously you're gonna have a lot of defensive attention early in the attack. So at this point it's looking really good. Everything is moving in nicely. The funnel has been good. Um, the clan castle is a lava hound and a balloon in this case. Um, I'm gonna drop both poison spells right on the queen as well as kill the balloon and then also help out with the lava pup. So most of the times the queen is responsible for killing the clan castle since that's air troops most of the time right now. So um, uh, lava hound is no real uh, threat although the queen takes a bit of time for it. Also um, baby dragon and valkyries are no real threat. The queen is able to kill the baby dragon easily. And um, the third clan castle that we are seeing often is Golem Loon, and obviously the bowlers can just uh, kill the golem um, very quickly. So, yeah, defensive clan castles are no real threat for this attack strategy, so let's move on. Early rage spell, then my king has lost quite a bit of health already, so I'm gonna pop the king ability, and then right after use the Grand Warden's ability, because that makes the king and all his barbarians invulnerable, so a bit more of invulnerable DPS. Um, so at this point uh, Rage Spell and Warn ability have been used and then uh, I have also used the Heal spell already right uh, around this area right here around that uh, Tesla because there was bombs going off, bowlers were dropping a little bit and it's really important to me that the bowlers survive um, the first half of uh, the raid or the initial part of the kill squad um, as, as good as possible because obviously in big numbers they put out the most DPS so um, that's why I used that early heal spell right there and then second jump is already down uh, to help over the clan castle into this next section of the base right here and uh, the second rage spell is gonna follow shortly so no spells used um, in this case for hawk riders or balloons as I, as I told you guys, Queen is able to take care of the Lava Hound very easily and then I'm already starting to send in Hawks towards this bottom mortar because most of the defenses in this part of the base are distracted so the Hawks can just come in and do their thing being targeted towards the Archer Tower and that cannon right there coming in, taking care of the mortar and that uh, all that riffraff very quickly A couple of trailing Hawks to help out with that Inferno right there so that's going down um, double bomb going off killing those two hawks but um, yeah, it's gonna be okay and at this point I'm already coming in with balloons on the other side of the base um, sending them uh, all in right here um, uh, yeah so very with this base falling very quickly in the end so um, plan certainly worked out right here and the rest is obviously cleanup so we are gonna speed through that but um, I think that uh, breaks down uh, how this attack strategy works pretty well and bunch of troops left for cleanup here so yeah the execution definitely um, uh, as went to plan in this attack and wrapped up a fairly easy three star in the end and this was on their um, top town hall 10 as well which we had failed on twice before already all right so let's take a look at the next base this one was uh, slightly lower town hall 10 and we had hit this one before as well 
and failed. So I had a bit of an idea for the opener because uh, shout out to my man Stevo, the opener was pretty good, just uh, the follow up wasn't quite ideal so we had to think a 98% fail on this one. Um, in this case uh, my um, Stevo was going in right here using a jump spell over this cannon to jump into the first inferno compartment. Um, the archer tower and this gold mine are gonna fall to due to the funneling all this is gonna fall to funneling as well. Um, so I figured the jump spell isn't really necessary because the bowlers aren't gonna go over here. They are definitely gonna move their way around this way. So I decided to use my jump spell right over in this area and only bring one jump spell in this case. Because I really th thought there was no big gain in jumping into this compartment uh, except maybe getting the wizard house a bit um, earlier but I just wanted to my bowlers to destroy this entire section of the base right here so um, that's why I decided to use only one jump spell and uh, I decided to rather bring two heal spells because heal spells are obviously very versatile you can use them on um, balloons uh, you can use them on hawk riders you can use them on your bowlers as well so um, yeah, pretty cool to have an extra heal spell for this base. Um, also, I brought a few more bowlers for this one, um, a few less um, balloons, only one baby dragon for funneling and a couple of um, um, giants for tanking, so that obviously always depends on the base as well. So, um, yeah, Stevo had uh, even more bowlers than I had, and he had uh, healers as well, so no real um, backhand hawks and loons, and uh, yeah, that was sort of my... Um, uh, my adjustment for this attack for to make, make it able to work. So once again bowlers in the clan castle so that makes for 21 bowlers um, overall. Let's go ahead take a look at the funneling and the opener. So um, starting things off I'm going to drop a giant on this uh, bottom mortar right here to um, distract the archer tower and then three bowlers behind are gonna take care of that um, barracks and that mortar so that's pretty cool because now the funnel on this side is already created probably could have used um, even only two bowlers but um, yeah it doesn't really matter now golem is now going in once again with the grand warden behind to give it more um, HP and then uh, once this archer tower right here is distracted I'm gonna use two more bowlers to take care of the gold mine and that wizard tower so once again nice job by Stevo uh, on scouting that then the baby dragon is coming in to just take care of these trash buildings right here because obviously that's quite good value for a baby dragon right there. So now a test wall breaker has already been deployed and the rest of the wall breakers are now going in doing their thing as well. Cracking that wall open and then it's time to uh, unleash hell after that. Um, gold storage going down. Now I'm placing the jump spell. few of my clan mates uh, in Discord actually called this jump fail because it didn't really open up this compartment with the mortar but really I'm fine with that um, it's pretty cool if the uh, bowlers go into this compartment as well because then they are gonna get a few wizzy towers so honestly I didn't really care if the jumps will open up that compartment or not and because in this compartment I can obviously get that inferno I can get those um, wizzy towers so um, yeah, I didn't really think this was a jump fail, but um, Clan Castle coming out once again, it's Lava Loon right here, so um, pretty interesting, but uh, as I said, I'm not worried about Lava Loon. Warden ability, Rage Spell, Heal Spell used, second Rage Spell already down, bowlers are doing massive work, then I just decided to send pretty much all my Hawk Riders in towards the right side, since there are so many air defenses, you obviously cannot send balloons over there, so yeah, Hawks going in. Decided to drop the last heal spell there as well. Got a little bit unlucky with spring traps, so I decided to just spam the rest of my hawks as well. Um, those balloons over here towards this archer tower actually got unlucky, caught a red bomb and a black bomb, so couldn't really expect that. So I decided to go a bit heavier on those guys, um, get that archer tower out of the way, sent in two more balloons right there, which are obviously going to be able to take out the archer tower. Couple of giant bombs going off towards my hawks, but the queen is. Um, still uh, alive and kicking so that's all good still has her ability she's gonna use it in a second right here to take care of that um, cannon then the, this archer tower is being tanked for by the grand warden so um, yeah the balloons uh, are moving in unharmed and I'm gonna save the last two balloons for cleanup because this one is all over once again very quickly so um, yeah I brought a few less balloons in this case as you saw and uh, I wanted to talk about that a little bit more as well because 
the number of balloons that I bring um, always uh, depends on the the defenses towards the outside. So let's take a look at this base one more time. And by the way, we were able to yeah defeat war bears, although it wasn't our cleanest performance in the end. But shout out to the Town Hall Knights because they did really well this war. So in this case, um, this entire side right here, this right side of the base is obviously um, protected by air defense. So I can't really send any balloons there and I didn't want to enter there, so um, I figured the bowlers would be able to take care of all of this, so realistically one, two, maybe three archer towers uh, towards the perimeter of the base, which would need balloons, so that's why I brought only six balloons and also I wanted to have a heavier bowler squad for this one, so yeah, that's what it depends on. On the previous base I thought there were a lot more um, balloon targets towards the outside, so that's uh, what um, kind of makes the decision for me on uh, balloons and hawks. Sometimes I'm even only using uh, just hawk riders only with 20 or 21 hawk riders or sometimes only balloons only. It really depends on the base but um, I really feel like this army composition with 10-10 uh, yeah, uh, uh, hawks and balloons really gives me a lot of flexibility. So that's why I do it the way I do it and um, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, as I said, this was my first ever video of this kind, so let, maybe you can let me know in the comment section below if you enjoy this type of attack strategy video. I might bring you a few more of those then in the future. Um, I just kind of wanted to highlight it because it just uh, I feel like it really works really well right now for me. So yeah, once again, hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next one, I will see you all later. Peace out.